you're using your Mac wrong. If you want to be more productive and waste less time and you're looking for ways to do that, Mac productivity usually looks like this. What no one has told you is that the biggest productivity gains are hidden in plain sight and they have nothing to do with apps or features or gimmicks. I've been teaching productivity for years and I constantly see people use macOS in a way that's just painfully slow and inefficient. But listen, this is a productivity video. You ain't got time for a long backstory, so let's get right into it. Here is what you can start doing right now to master the minimalist approach to a super productive macOS workflow. Remove most of the default stuff from the dock because you're not going to use these programs frequently anyway. To optimize your dock settings, go to System Preferences, Dock and Menu Bar, and do the following. Make the dock size smaller, turn magnification off because it turns your icons into a moving target and that's not helpful, and check the Automatically Hide the Dock option. Here's why these settings increase your productivity. The extra screen space you gain from hiding the dock is worth more than the dock being permanently accessible. And as you'll see in a hyperproductive workflow, you rarely, if ever, use the dock anyway. Here's the one exception. Add programs to the dock that you want to be able to open files in. For example, you have a photo editing app in your dock, so you can drag a photo file onto it to start editing immediately. And here's one of the reasons the dock isn't that useful. To open apps, get used to using Spotlight. Do this by hitting Command plus Spacebar and then start typing the name of the application you want to open. This may feel strange at first, but you'll quickly notice that this is the fastest way to open apps by far. Bonus tip, download and install the Alfred app, which works in the same way as Spotlight, but it's just a hair faster and more customizable to your specific needs. Get used to using Command plus Tab to switch between active apps. Note, get used to doing this blindly. Most of the time you're switching back and forth between two or maybe three apps. There's no need to look at the app switcher and move the highlight to the desired app. Command plus Tab switches to the next app, Command plus tab, tab switches to app number three, and so on. Use the three finger swipe up gesture sparingly or never. It requires three actions for one switch and it's delayed because of the animation. So it looks nice, but it's not fast. I always see Mac users swiping back and forth between multiple desktops, trying to find the right workspace or app. It's a waste of time and a sign that you simply have too many things open at once. Switching between apps with command tab is faster than switching between desktops. So it's better to stack multiple app windows on top of each other than to spread them out over desktops. Double click into the empty part of an app's taskbar to expand it to cover the whole screen while avoiding the annoying full screen option which places the app on a separate desktop. Open less stuff and use command Q frequently to close unused apps. The tips we've looked at so far make for a fast and frictionless workflow. But it doesn't work if you always have 17 apps open, including five different browser windows with 37 tabs each spread across three different desktops. If this is you, the solution you need is to close all this clutter. You need more command Q, not more productivity apps or features. Keep your desktop clean. Nothing needs to be on your desktop and your desktop is going to be covered by application windows anyway. Instead, have a good folder structure so you always know where to put and find files. Don't dump files on your desktop temporarily. We all know they stay there for way too long. Instead, always know where a file belongs. And here's an example of a clean folder structure. A video file, like the one I'm recording right now, belongs in the movies folder, in the Ikario project folder within that, and in the Mac Productivity Tips folder within that. Speaking of folders, go to Finder, View, Show View Options, set Group By and Sort By to Name. Then go to Finder, Preferences, Advanced, and check Keep Folders on Top. This makes your folders less messy by default, and this way of sorting just makes so much more sense. Trust me, try these settings out, you will never want to go back. Whenever a new app prompts you, the right answer is almost always don't allow notifications. Go to System Preferences and Notifications and Focus to turn off notifications and disallow notification sounds. Generally, you want to see a lot of off here. You know you've done this right when you get notifications only rarely and it's important every single time. What about the focus features? You can maybe set this up, but the most important thing is to have very few notifications and a distraction-free work environment by default. If you're using a MacBook, use an external mouse and keyboard. The MacBook trackpad is phenomenal and the keyboard no longer sucks, but you're still going to be faster with an external mouse and keyboard. 
This is also important for ergonomics. For your ergonomics, your screen needs to be up here and the keyboard needs to be down here. Otherwise, you're screwing yourself up one way or the other. And on the note of keyboards, learn how to touch type and practice until you're fast. And watch this video to learn how. Go to usethekeyboard.com and learn all the keyboard shortcuts for any action you repeatedly take in any program you use. Seriously, do this. I cannot overstate how important it is to learn keyboard shortcuts. Optimize your mouse settings by going to System Preferences Mouse. There's no right or best setting. You have to test out different options and here's what to look out for. If you have to lift your mouse and reposition to scroll, your tracking speed is too low. If you often overshoot your target and have to correct, tracking speed is too high. When it's well calibrated, you should generally know where your cursor is without visually having to seek for it. And you should be able to click whatever you want to click on the screen almost intuitively without a lot of searching or extra friction. Use the Magnets app for easy screen arrangements. With this app, you can easily arrange two windows side by side or otherwise tile and arrange multiple apps. Use two screens, but use them sparingly. One reference screen and one work screen is generally best. A mistake here is feeling like you have to justify two screens and the Magnets app by having loads of windows all over the place. And a note on external screens, make sure you get the right dongle or dock or adapter to connect your screen. For example, this dongle only feeds 30 Hertz instead of 60 Hertz to the external monitor. And this makes everything look a bit more choppy and it makes mouse cursor tracking less intuitive and slower. Speaking of multiple windows and screens, do smart multitasking, but avoid dumb multitasking. An example of smart multitasking is having your presentation slides on one screen and your OBS recording settings and presentation notes on the other for recording a video. Another example is having a spreadsheet on half of your screen and the reference from which you add values to your spreadsheet on the other half of the screen. An example of dumb multitasking is, well, the thing we already talked about, 75 apps across five desktops and notifications pinging at you all the time. When in doubt, the smartest and most productive option is always single tasking. Optimize your internet browsing by using Firefox and the uBlock Origin extension, as well as the AdGuard app to block ads, trackers, and malicious scripts. It's not only safer, more private, and more pleasant to not be endlessly barraged by ads, it also makes websites load faster. Use backups. Everything important should always be backed up because not having access to your work stuff after a disk fails or your laptop gets stolen is, well, not very productive. For backup solutions with a privacy focus, check out pCloud, Sync, or iStrive. Good budget options include iCloud, pCloud, and iStrive. Make sure that important work project folders are always synced and backed up automatically so you don't have to manually remember and drag files and folders around. This should just happen all by itself. Finally, use a password manager like 1Password, Bitwarden, or LastPass because there's simply no other way to efficiently log into all of your different accounts that is also safe. A password manager is not only the safest, but also the fastest way to log into different accounts. Plus, just like with the backups, this doesn't immediately feel like a productivity boost until something goes wrong and then you have to spend several days manually changing passwords and trying to recover hacked accounts. All of this will make a huge difference, even if it's not obvious. With some of these tips, maybe you're thinking, how much of a difference can that really make? But once you start doing all of this, 90% of people will look like they're working in slow motion compared to you. But with that said, let me share one final important tip with you. Don't fall into the efficiency trap. What is the efficiency trap? Basically, it's this. You can be efficient without being effective. Efficiency, a faster workflow, is kind of like having a really powerful, finely tuned engine in your car. This is great to have, but you can still be driving that car in the wrong direction or even wasting all the horsepower just spinning the wheels in one place. Efficiency is important and useful, but it is not the core of productivity. So then what is the core of productivity? It is your ability to do the most important tasks with deep focus. And just like most people suck at efficiency, most people suck at that too. So don't get lost in just optimizing your efficiency also keep in mind that what really matters is that you spend effective work time doing the things that actually move you towards your most important goals. If you want to explore this further and you're serious about becoming a highly productive, goal-achieving badass, 
and without having to sacrifice your life on the altar of hustle culture, make sure to check out Focus and Action, our productivity program that has changed lives since we launched it in 2020. Check out the link below to learn more about Focus and Action. And also, do you have any other of these kind of hidden in plain sight productivity or efficiency secrets? If so, let me know by leaving a comment below. Thank you.